What's going on guys? Today we'll be talking about our four stage lenticular filtration skid. Stay tuned. Guys, I can't stress this enough. Please read your user manual from start to finish and become completely familiarized with it before attempting to operate these machines. So the first thing we want to do when we receive our lenticular skid is to load the filter media, whether it be bags or lenticular or whatever. And so here we're going to be loading the filter bags into the filter bag housing. So you just open the eye bolts and carefully remove the lid on this system. Always remember to vent your system in case there's kind of compression, compressed air, anything like that in there. And so you have this thing here holds down your bags to make sure that it's a nice snug fit. And you can get these bags pretty much in any micron that you may want. And um, different types of materials for chemical compatibilities. Inside there's a little basket, so it's like a strainer basket, but this basket helps to keep your bag open and so it doesn't stick to the sides of the wall. So you get a very efficient filtration. So anyway, the bag goes inside then your filter bag, and then that filter bag gets held down in place by um, this little spring-loaded device that actually gets pushed down by the lid. So just make sure that when you put in your bag, you kind of like fluff it up, open it up, and then the the seal, this, this gasket, make sure that it is clean, make sure that it's lubricated with either water or, or Vaseline or some kind of food-safe uh, lubricant and then we put the lid on and so this lid gets tightened by hand nice snug fit and always alternate bolts as you're tightening kind of like what you would do when you are tightening a car tire where you just tighten in opposite uh, sets of bolts and so this needs to be nice and snug you don't have to overdo it you don't have to go crazy on the tightening So every filtration stage has vent valves, and these are used either to vent air from the system as you're filling or to inject compressed air to drain the system efficiently. Also, every stage has a side glass so you can see what, if anything, is going on, and then you can verify what the operating pressure is in each stage with the pressure gauge. An important concept to grasp in this type of filtration is differential pressure. Differential pressure is the difference between the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure. And so, for example, if your inlet is 20 PSI and your outlet is 10 PSI, your differential pressure is 10 PSI. And so that number gives you an indication whether your cartridge or your bag is full and needs to be changed. So that gives you a visual representation of how dirty your cartridge is. Disassembling the lenticular housings is a straightforward process. All you need to do is unscrew the bolts on the clamps. But before you do that, make sure that you open the vent valve and that there is no compressed gas inside of the housings and have a place to put these housings when uh, you open it. They can be extremely heavy, especially if you have to lift high to clear uh, the lenticular modules that are inside. You can also connect these to some sort of shop hoist to make the lifting easier, but on the bigger housings, two people can easily do it, uh, uh, one strong person as well. As you can see, I'm not that strong, but I manage just fine. When installing uh, lenticular modules, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you clean all contact surface so you get a nice uh, tight seal, make sure that gasket isn't damaged. You want to lubricate that gasket with water, solvent, or maybe some Vaseline. Just make sure that the surface is clean. Now, there's two plates. One's got a big hole. That one goes in the bottom. The one with a smaller diameter hole goes on the top. And depending on what uh, options you ordered, you're going to get several center posts. A two high housing can fit a one lenticular module by using an adapter. So in this case, we're just going to put one lenticular module. And so you have the shaft. The short end goes to the bottom, screws in, snug, that's all you gotta do. And then you're going to carefully place your lenticular module over the shaft and make sure it's uh, snug in place. Next you place the top plate on top. You can't mess this up because the diameter of the hole, it just wouldn't fit in the bottom, so you can't mix them up. 
in some situations you wouldn't use this plate, but bottom line, you screw the top adapter into that center post until it is nice and snug because you do want to get a compression uh, fit on that plate. If not, you just install it directly on uh, the housing like so, and you're done. Once you've carefully placed the lid back over your lenticular modules, you simply hand tighten the clamps back on the housing. And when you're done hand tightening them, you're going to grab a wrench and tighten these uh, nuts one by one, and you're going to do a star pattern. You're gonna crisscross from side to side, and you're gonna go in a side, a side pattern, and you're gonna probably wanna do this two or three times just to make sure that you have a nice leak-proof fit. This is similar to when you're putting a car tire on or something like that. As far as lenticular module placement is concerned, you would always put your clarifying modules first and then followed by your carbon adsorption modules. Always check your system pressure, make sure there's no compressed gases inside your housings. Always check your sight glasses to make sure that you really have uh, fully drained your systems. And uh, we use uh, the same wrench to unbolt the clamps that are holding the housings down. Always check your housing for damage. Always check your gaskets for damage. And whatever module or filter you're changing, Always check those for damage. Sometimes uh, shipping damage can occur, so you just need to make sure that it is integral, that it isn't broken in some uh, regard. So that's very important. So our housings typically are 30 inches long and they have three or four filters. And so these filters are secured by a, fl a plate and that is, you see, uh, secured by a wing nut. Simple, the cartridges, have an adapter called Code 7, and they have thin ends at the top. You can get these from pretty much any manufacturer. As you can see, to remove the cartridges, you give them a quarter turn. Um, they have an O-ring at the bottom, which needs to be lubricated somehow when you're installing it. And it has a specific flange called Code 7 on the bottom. And so that installs, uh, you just insert it into the two grooves. You line up the tabs of the two grooves into the housing and then you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise by a quarter turn. Make sure that those two gaskets are lubricated and in good shape, properly installed, and that's it. Next, you return that plate on top, secure it with a wing nut. It just has to be uh, hand tied. This doesn't need to be overly tightened at all since it's already locked at the bottom and these are great. Uh, they're meant to capture any carbon or uh, you can even do sterilization with this uh, type of cartridge. The reassembly is straightforward. Make sure that everything is clean. All the contact surfaces are clean, that that gas is in good condition and lubricated. Place your housing carefully back over uh, the base. Bolt it back in place, uh, alternating the bolts, and that's uh, pretty much it. For this type of cartridge, there is an integrity test called bubble point, where with using compressed air, you can identify whether there is a leak in these types of uh, cartridges. So you might want to reference your user manual on how to conduct a bubble point test. One of the cool upgrades that we offer with our lenticular based systems are the Trinox clamp sense uh, clamps. And these things, what they are, are clamps that have a integral torque setting where they will clamp just the right amount. Because if you over clamp, if you over tighten your clamps, the gasket gets squeezed too much and then you can actually create leaks by that. So what's cool with the clamp sense is that when you get to the required torque, they skip. So they just... Um, don't tighten anymore, so they're in 
awesome upgrade uh, to these systems. You might want to check them out. One of the cool features of our system is that you can isolate any of the housings. In this case, by closing this valve and the top valves, you could isolate either the left or the right bag housing so you can change out the bags while in operation. And then the vent valves on top are used to flush the system so you can get rid of all of the solvent that is inside those housings by using compressed air. So let's say we're going to purge the system. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to turn this valve off or whatever valve you have as an inlet. And so we're going to use these to inject air into the system to get everything to exit. So we want to close off the inlet valves, whatever they may be in each stage, so the air doesn't go back up. So we connect air here, and so the air is going to push everything out. And it'll come down this pipe into your next process. Now, if you just want to isolate a certain uh, step, in this case, we would close this valve here, and you can drain here. Every single stage has drains. So you can drain here. There's another one back there that you can drain. If you wanted to drain your lenticulars, there is a drain valve here to get rid of the water in the pipes. And then there's another drain here if you just wanted to drain the housing. So this is the inlet, and that's the outlet to drain. And that goes, that pipe there goes to your next step. So that's how that works. And so if you wanted to empty this uh, stage, you know, you would want to close off any previous valves to prevent the air from returning on you. So you close this valve. And that's the next valve down the stage over there. You see it, it's between the two particulars, right? And so then you would come up here. We would open this valve, connect compressed air to it, push compressed air, Everything would drain either to that valve or we could leave this valve open and push it to the next stage. So you can push the fluid from stage to stage that way. When you're done, you close this off. You open and close the valves as necessary. And that's it. As you, so you can see each stage as a side glass. So you can see what's going on through each stage. And then every, every tube has drains. So you can drain the actual tube itself, and then every housing has drains, so you can drain the housing. This way we don't leave any micella that you may need to drain from the actual plumbing. You don't leave that. And then every stage has a valve that you can open and close to isolate each stage. Though every system includes a three-way valve to recirculate your micella to your centrifuge, an optional feature is a spectrometer. And what the spectrometer does is shows you a graphical representation to help you determine the extraction endpoint. So you're gonna get a little screen that'll tell you what the concentration of cannabinoids is, uh, uh, fats and um, pigments and things of that nature that gives you a very good visual representation of when you should stop reusing that solvent so you can continue on to the next stage and so this helps you increase efficiency by allowing you to reuse solvent knowing that it's safe to reuse them and knowing when it's necessary to stop. One cool feature about our system is the option to use neoprene jackets. So these uh, jackets just zip on to any size housing and they will help reduce the amount of condensation that builds up and keeps your housings cool. By now you've noticed that our system is mounted on a big tray. So this acts as a drip pan because inevitably there will be some leaks. So instead of losing your micella to your floor, we actually have a drain where you can collect all of your micella that may have spilled in an accident so you can recycle it. And yes, your entire system is mounted on casters. It's incredibly easy to move this around your lab so you can get to cleaning and all those necessary maintenance activities.